So today's video is going to be another solved true crime case. Today we've got a little bit of a shorter case, don't worry this is not a two-parter. This one's a bit of a small lesser known case from Washington in the US. I like doing smaller cases here and there because these are the ones that don't have the documentaries and they don't have widespread media coverage, you know what I mean? I like to cover these stories that don't get told as much. So that's why this one's probably a little bit shorter, there wasn't that much information out there on this case, but I've done my best. But before we get into it, I just want to thank our sponsors for making this video possible, Magellan TV. Magellan TV is my personal favorite documentary streaming service. They have a range of different topics from like space to earth to nature, history, science, and of course, true crime. They have so many different cases on there from like the big ones like Charles Manson, all the way down to little cases from a bunch of different countries. And and I personally had never heard of most of the cases on there, which is personally one of the reasons why I love Magellan TV so much is because I'm always learning about new cases and new things. They also have a bunch of conspiracy theory documentaries that I know a lot of you guys would love, things like Aliens, Yetis, Bigfoot, and they add new programs on there every week. So you're never gonna get bored. There's always gonna be something new for you to sink your teeth into. A documentary that I watched recently and I loved and I've been recommending to everyone is called called Murdered Online. It's about a drama student named Roz who responded to an advert online for a job. However, when she went to the interview, well, it wasn't a job interview at all. And that's all I'm gonna tell you. I don't wanna tell you anything more because I don't wanna spoil it, but please watch that documentary. It was so good. You can watch Magellan TV on pretty much any device that you have and it's completely ad free. So you're not gonna be interrupted while you're on your true crime binges. So what are you waiting for? If you click the link down below in the description, Magellan Magellan TV are very kindly offering you guys one whole month free of the service. So take advantage. Thanks again to Magellan TV for sponsoring this video. Now, before I get into it, I just wanna give my usual disclaimer that I mean absolutely no disrespect to anyone that I talk about in this video. This video is for educational purposes and everything that I'm about to say is just information that I have found on the internet and I'm compiling into one video. Letitia Monique Frazier, affectionately known as Tish or Lil Poo to her friends and family, was an 18 year old girl Girl born on October 3rd, 1991 in Washington, DC. Growing up, Letitia was a little bit tomboyish as her father described her. He was like her little boy rather than her little girl. She loved soccer. She loved just all kinds of sports, basketball, things like that. And she was really good at them as well. She was just into a lot of typically masculine hobbies and she spent a lot of time with her father, getting dirty out in the garden, things like that. And that's why he called her his little boy. Letitia came from a pretty poor family. They'd struggled financially all her life, especially after this case. Her mother would be in and out of homeless shelters. But despite these financial struggles, in every other way possible, Letitia was just a normal teenage girl. She had friends, she went out. Around the time of this case, she was almost 19 years old. So at this point, she was starting to kind of piece together what her adult life was gonna look like. She had a three-year-old daughter named Diamond and Letitia had just secured a job at her local McDonald's which meant that she could finally start providing for her daughter and you know forming this proper little family unit that she so loved. She was excited with where her life was heading. She was finally getting her own income. She was doing things for herself you know going out and getting this job and providing for her daughter and her daughter really was her world. Letitia actually had a tattoo that said Diamond up here on her upper arm she just adored that little girl. Her dream career was to become a chef, like a really high up, like head chef. She was really passionate about food and cooking and her father really supported her dream to become a chef. He was so proud of her, even though she was only taking those first few steps. Her father said that Letitia was a great mother. She was a hard worker. I believe that she was actually trying to do schooling at the same time, like get a higher education whilst working her McDonald's job whilst caring for a three-year-old girl. She was an incredible woman. You can literally see just based on the facts of her life that she's doing all of this at once. She's really trying to be independent and provide. She seemed like such an amazing woman. Letitia was leading a very happy, very normal life. That was until August 2nd, 2010, when she rather suddenly disappeared 
after a shift at work. Her family and friends got on this as quick as they possibly could. They did their own searches. They were calling around everyone that Letitia knew. They went to her work. They got the police involved. They were printing out posters. They were giving them out to everyone, knocking on doors asking had anyone seen Letitia. But as the weeks were going by, she still hadn't gotten in contact with anyone, still hadn't returned home, and there were no leads either. No one said that they'd seen her at all. There was absolutely nothing for police to go off, and so the investigation grinded to a halt, and her family were left with no answers. At this point in the case, the main believed theory was that Letitia had run away from home. Maybe she was just bored of her life, she was sick of her life, and she just wanted to kind of restart. A lot of people believe that maybe she was harbored by her friends, like her friends were keeping her in their home, but they were pretending like she was missing and like they hadn't seen her. Letitia's mother and all of her friends tried to publicize her disappearance as much as they possibly could, believing that the more people saw Letitia's face, the more people were aware of this case, the more likely they would be to get some kind of news. For five whole months, there were absolutely no developments on this case and Letitia's family were left not knowing where she was, if she was even safe, you know, what had happened to her, if she was happy where she was. But all of that changed one night when one of her family members received a message on Facebook. Now immediately as soon as Letitia's sister saw this message, she knew that it was from a fake account because this account was actually using Letitia's name, using her middle and last name. So the person that had messaged her was called Monique Frazier, which was weird enough by itself, but when she read that first message, she said that her heart dropped. The first message read, your sister is dead and gone. I'm watching you, one more dead to go. They followed up with body parts in Rock Creek. Keep the flyers out of the fucking hood. We took them down. So these messages were essentially threatening Letitia's sister, saying, we've killed your sister, she's gone, and we can do the same to you. And the message also alleges to know where Letitia's body is, and they even give a name, Rock Creek. Now, I'm not entirely sure what Rock Creek was. Some sources said that it was like an apartment block, like a neighborhood. Others said that it was a park. However, as soon as police were notified that Letitia's sister had received these messages, they went straight to Rock Creek. They looked absolutely everywhere in this particular place and they couldn't find anything. No part of Letitia or any of her clothing or any form of evidence at all. There were no clues at this place. Now, what happens next? I'm not entirely clear on the timeline here or specifics because like I said, there wasn't much information on this case. I believe the Facebook messages may have been reported in the news or something like that. And someone in particular saw these news broadcasts or heard about it. And this person anonymously went to the police and told them what they knew about this situation. Because this tip was anonymous, I don't think it's been like publicly posted, but from this tip, police went and arrested some suspects. Five months after the disappearance of Letitia Frazier, six people were arrested on suspicion of having something to do with that. There were three girls and three boys. They were all around Letitia's age. I don't have specific ages of a couple of them. Some of them were a bit younger, some of them around Letitia's age, and some actually in their 20s. Like I said, Letitia was just about to turn 19 when she disappeared. So like I said, there were three girls and three boys. These three girls were some of the youngest in the group. Their names were Linnea Bell, Anika Nelson, and Cynthia Proctor. The boys, one of them was the youngest in the group. He was just 16 years old. His name was Johnny Sweet. And then the other two boys, well, they weren't boys, they were men, they were in their 20s. Their names were Lawrence Hassan and Brian Gaither. So when police were given these names and they looked into this, they changed their whole theory. The initial theory was that Letitia had run away, someone was harboring her, someone knew where she was or what had happened to her, but they just weren't saying it. But now police believed that Letitia was 
killed. Even though they had that Facebook message a while ago that said that Letitia was murdered, they never had any evidence to back that up. So they didn't know whether that was just someone trying to scare Letitia's sister or whether it was genuine. But now they believe that it could be genuine. So police's new theory was that after Letitia's shift at McDonald's, she went to go and meet this group of people, all of those names that I just said. They believe that while she was there, some kind of dispute took place, some kind of argument, some kind of fight, and this ended with them murdering Letitia Frazier. Of course, at this point, it was just a theory. They didn't know who was involved and to what degree they were involved. And so police needed to do some digging on this group. So they were asking around the neighborhood and they found that the whole group tended to hang out at Brian Gaither's place. And he was one of the older ones, one of the men in his twenties. So police went down there, they searched the whole apartment and they found nothing. They didn't find any physical evidence connecting Brian Gaither or the whole group group to Letitia Frazier. That was until they brought in crime scene investigators who used luminol on the carpets. And luminol is that chemical that when it's shone on like previous blood staining, it can show it up again. So they decided to pull the carpet up because I mean, as much as you can clean the top of the carpet, if it's soaked through to the bottom of it, then they'll be able to see. But when they pulled up that carpet, they didn't expect to see a huge blood stain in the floorboards. There'd been so much blood that it had soaked through into the wood. So following this discovery, the whole group of six were arrested in February of 2011. They were all taken for questioning at the police station and this actually proved to be the easiest part of the whole investigation for the police because once they were all in there, half of them cracked. I don't know who gave what information to the police, but they quickly learned that the ringleaders of this whole group, of this whole situation had been the youngest 16 year old Johnny Sweet and the oldest 20 something year old Brian Gaither. In fact it was more Johnny than it was Brian. I think Brian just kind of supplied the apartment you know the the place to do it but it was Johnny's idea. Johnny had orchestrated this whole thing. He believed that Letitia had stolen $900 from him. I don't know the specifics of that. I don't know why he thought that. However, a lot of people believe that that is not true. There was no evidence to say that Letitia had ever stolen money from him, that she'd ever stolen money from anyone. And besides, she was actually the only one of this whole friend group that actually had a job. So she actually had her own money, whereas all of the other ones were either just unemployed, lazy, or they were too young to get a job. You know, Johnny Sweet was 16. But for some reason, he believed that Letitia had stolen $900 from him. And so he told all of his friends and half of this group didn't actually know Letitia before this. It wasn't like this was her main friend group. She just kind of knew a few people in this group. She would hang out with them occasionally. So Johnny Sweet proposed to this group that Letitia had stolen $900 from him and he wanted to teach her a lesson. The plan was that they were all going to get together at Brian Gaither's place. Half of them were going to hide in the back bedroom where that huge blood stain was found. They were going to get Letitia over to the house and then when she came in they were going to essentially jump her and you know beat her up and teach her a lesson for stealing this money. They all said that they never intended to kill Letitia. That wasn't the plan. Their plan was just to, you know, hurt her and scare her and intimidate her. None of them are overly specific on what happened at what point. I think they're very careful not to incriminate themselves too much here. So the timeline of events isn't very specific. But police believe that Letitia was lured to the apartment that night on the pretense of them just hanging out, you know, just chilling as they often did. But they believe that when she arrived, she was ambushed and then a bunch of people ran out from the other rooms, you know, this full group of six then began beating her. They believed that Letitia, as part of this whole ordeal, was gagged. She was tied at the wrists and the ankles with duct tape. A pillowcase was actually tied over her head to stifle her screams so that she couldn't be heard. And then the whole group took turns kicking her, punching her, choking her, stomping on her. They believe she was strangled and then dragged into the closet of this bedroom where she eventually succumbed to her injuries and passed away. They believe that when it was over, 
Johnny Sweet, the 16-year-old, and Brian Gaither both dragged Letitia's body into the bathroom of the apartment and laid her in the bath. They then left her there, left her dead body laying in the bath as they went back into the living room of the apartment and they all just carried on as if nothing had just happened. They just carried on drinking, smoking, just having a normal night together. And then when the next morning rolled around, that was when they decided to deal with this situation. It's not entirely known who did what again at this point. I'm sorry I keep saying that, but it's because, you know, the information on this case isn't so clear. But it's believed that members of the group then went into the bathroom and began dismembering Letitia Frazier's body. The pieces were put into garbage bags and I think they were then put into Gaither's car who then drove the body parts out to Rock Creek and put them all in a dumpster that was eventually taken away and put into landfill. And that is where they believe Letitia Frazier's body has been this whole time, just decomposing in landfill with rubbish. If this is true, since Letitia's body has been in landfill for so long, it would be virtually impossible to go in and try and dig for her and recover her body. At this point in the case, it had been over a year since she went missing, so imagine how many tons of rubbish were just piled on top of her in that time. It'd be a really dangerous operation to try and carry out, you know, to get people to physically go in and dig through all this rubbish. And the likelihood of them actually finding her in a year's worth of rubbish in a landfill is, is very, very low. And so unfortunately, Letitia's family have never had her body to give her a proper burial. So this case then went to court and all six of these people were tried for Letitia's murder. And it was proposed there that the actual motive for this killing was not the $900, it was that they felt that Letitia, the group felt that Letitia no longer fit in with them. She had a child, she went out and got a job, she was becoming successful, she was providing for her little family and the group just felt like she wasn't one of them anymore. They believed that the group was jealous and they just didn't, you know, they didn't see her as, you know, one of the cool kids anymore because she did have a child and she did have a job. And they believe that all of these emotions, this jealousy as well, turning into anger, which eventually manifested itself in, in murder. We don't know whether Johnny Sweet genuinely believes that Letitia stole that $900 from him. Whether it's true or not, he could have genuinely believed that she did. So he could genuinely believe his own motive. Not that that's an excuse for murder or that there is any excuse for murder, but at least he kind of, if that was true, he believed a particular thing that led to this. Whereas those other five people, a lot of them didn't even know who Letitia was. They were just kind of jumping in and beating up this woman eventually to the point of murder, just because it was fun, just because it was a group activity. At their trial, most of the members of this group pled guilty to their charges. All of the girls, Lawrence Hassan, Brian Gaither, so those two older men as well. Gaither was 25 years old and it was his apartment that all of this took place in and he kept it quiet. He facilitated this. At his trial, a video was actually played of a news broadcast where he was actually speaking with Letitia's mother. And in this broadcast, he denied even really knowing Letitia. But I mean, neighbors were on to him. I think they'd seen her in the area and stuff. And so he offered Letitia's mother, who was standing there as he was kind of giving this interview, he offered for her to go inside his house and look around and see if she was there. And she accepted. So he took Letitia's mother into his apartment where he knew that her murder and dismemberment took place. He let her walk around there. And of course, her mother didn't see anything because there was nothing left at this point. And so when they both emerged from the house, Gaither then put his arm around Letitia's mother and comforted her as she continued the search for her missing daughter. The whole time, he knew that he'd watched and partook in her daughter's murder and dismembered her and then gotten rid of the body parts, covered it all up for months 
and he's just got his arm around her. I just find that so eerie. Brian Gaither pled guilty to first degree murder and actually confessed to being the one that threw away her body, like actually physically took those garbage bags with her dismembered body parts in and threw them in Rock Creek. For all of that, Brian Gaither was sentenced to 32 years in prison. All the others pled guilty to lesser charges like kidnapping, second degree murder. They all got varying sentences as well, so I'll run through a few of these. Lawrence Hassan got 18 years. The girls all got between like eight and 20 something years each. But Johnny Sweet, on the other hand, who was now 18 years old at the time of his trial, he is still denying everything. Even though all of his friends have confessed and said who did what in this murder, said that Johnny Sweet had a part in it, he orchestrated the whole thing, it was all his idea, he is pleading not guilty and denying even knowing anything about Letitia Frazier. Eventually this didn't really work. So they changed their story and Johnny's attorney said that he, yes, it was his plan to bring Letitia around and to teach her a lesson, but he never wanted her to die. Johnny never wanted her to die. It was his friends, the other five, that have all pled guilty. It was them that killed Letitia without his knowledge. Of course, this contradicted all five of their statements, so. Linnea Bell, who was around Johnny's age at the time of the murder, she even said in court that he essentially forced the group to do it to Letitia. She labeled it a peer pressure thing. It was kind of like he encouraged them all and made them feel guilty if they didn't join in beating her up. The court knew that no matter which way Johnny Sweet pled, guilty or not guilty, he was still gonna be found guilty overall and he was still gonna have a huge sentence. And so the prosecution decided to offer him a plea deal. If he was to plead guilty to this murder, they would offer him between 30 and 40 years in prison. Just so that they didn't have to go to trial, they didn't have to spend all this money going to trial when they knew what way it was gonna go anyway. However, Johnny Sweet, denied this. He still maintained his innocence, he still wanted to plead not guilty in trial, and he kind of knew that if he was found guilty he would get a larger sentence, but it was worth it to him because he believed that he was not guilty. Eventually, two years after the rest of his friend's trials, Johnny Sweet was also found guilty of the murder of Letitia Frazier. He was actually found guilty of a few different charges. This included first degree murder, kidnapping, tampering with physical evidence. For this, he was given a minimum of 30 years in prison, which if he'd just taken that plea deal, that would have been his maximum as well, pretty much. But now his maximum is 52 years. So that's the most he'll be serving, the least is 30. When he was asked if he had anything to say on the matter, Johnny Sweet said, I ain't gonna sugarcoat it, I had a part in it. A life was taken due to a careless decision. Hopefully someday y'all can forgive me. If y'all don't, I understand it. A couple of years later in 2017, Brian Gaither, so the man that confessed and pled guilty to his part in the Letitia's murder. He said that he strangled her. He said that he was the one that helped dismember and throw away her body parts. This man that did all of this somehow managed to appeal his sentence and was allowed a retrial. They were going to redecide if he was guilty after he'd already confessed. <laughs> and pled guilty. Anyway, this was clearly very unsuccessful and he was resentenced to 32 years, just like he was before. Although this time there was a slight difference in the sentencing, it was under a different statute, which means that he will be rewarded for good behavior. It's likely that he will have time knocked off of this 32 year sentence if he is a good prisoner a good inmate. So that's probably why he did this. That's probably why he did this retrial and appeal and stuff. Not because he believed he would be let out or, you know, found not guilty miraculously, but because he was trying to get a lesser sentence. A rather sad note to end this case on is that, of course, Letitia's family still haven't found her body. They still don't have, you know, a headstone or a grave site or anywhere in particular that they can go and mourn Letitia Frazier. They didn't have her body to bury and give her a 
proper send off and allow people to pay their respects. And you know, her daughter doesn't even have a gravesite to go and speak to her mother. Her daughter will be quite a bit older now and she'll understand that she no longer has her mother and that something has happened to her mother. Her family are staying as positive as they possibly can. Her father seems like such a light despite everything that's happened. But that is all I have on this case. Thank you so, so much for watching. If you have any more cases like these, you know, the smaller, lesser known cases that maybe don't get covered as much, feel free to leave them in the comments. I love covering the smaller ones like this. Thanks again to Magellan TV for sponsoring this video. Remember, they are very, very kindly offering you guys a full month free of the service. You click the link down below in the description. And if you do go and sign up for Magellan TV, make sure you watch Murdered Online because I loved it. Huge thank you to all of my channel members for helping me decide the cases that I cover, especially my tier two members whose names are all on screen right now. If you wanna become a channel member, you can just click the join button on a desktop or there'll be a link in the description of this video. But yeah, thank you so, so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed, please leave a thumbs up down below because that would really help me out. If you wanna subscribe, you can click this link right here. I post true crime content all the time. If you wanna subscribe to my second channel that I'm gonna be posting on now that I've moved, it's right here in this circle. And if you wanna watch another true crime video, there's a playlist on screen right now. Bye.